Hello, welcome back to our video series of building recommendation systems with TensorFlow. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. In our last video, we discussed content-based filtering and collaborative filtering. In this video, we'll be introducing you to the powerful TensorFlow Recommenders library, which is specifically designed to handle all stages of modern recommendation systems. As you may recall, in our very first episode, we already touched upon TensorFlow Recommenders. TensorFlow Recommenders was open sourced on GitHub in September 2020 and is our recommended library for building recommendation systems. It is built on top of TensorFlow 2 and Keras. Our goal is to make it an evolving platform, flexible enough for conducting academic research, and highly scalable for building web scale recommendation systems. TensorFlow Recommenders provides a set of components for building, evaluating, and deploying recommenders using TensorFlow. It aims at covering the entire stack, from retrieval through ranking to post-ranking, and ties into the larger TensorFlow ecosystem for powering research and production use. TensorFlow Recommenders already seamlessly integrates with SCAN and TF ranking. And we are working on additional integration with other Google products, such as TPU. TensorFlow Recommenders is driven by practical needs and grounded in years of experience of production recommender system at Google. Some of these products have a super large set of users and candidates items, which means they rely on highly reliable and efficient recommendation systems. TensorFlow Recommenders incorporates research results on multitask learning, feature interaction modeling, TPU training, and more. Easy to use is one of the key design goals of TensorFlow Recommenders. TensorFlow Recommenders is built on top of TensorFlow 2 and Keras and developed with ease of use in mind. In TensorFlow Recommenders, model building follows the Keras convention and is done via composition of Keras layers. Model fitting can be done via Keras or Estimator. We also provide detailed, extensive tutorials on tensorflow.org slash recommenders to help you get started with TensorFlow recommenders. In our very first episode, we highlighted that modern recommenders usually have multiple components to do retrieval, ranking, and post-ranking. The retrieval stage is responsible for selecting an initial set of hundreds of candidates from all possible candidates. The main objective for retrieval is to efficiently weed out all candidates that the user is not interested in. Because the retrieval model may be dealing with millions of candidates, it has to be computationally efficient. So now let's first try to build a retrieval model using TensorFlow recommenders. Before we dive into the modeling code, Let's first talk about the movie lens dataset we are going to use. Movie lens dataset is a classic dataset from Group Lens Research Group at the University of Minnesota. We can use TensorFlow Datasets API to load the movie lens datasets as you see in the first line. Movie lens contains a set of ratings given to movies by a set of users. And here we are showing a preview of the ratings. We have movie features like movie title and movie ID. We also have user features like user gender and zip code. Then we have a movie rating. We can look at the dataset in two ways. First, we can interpret it as an expressing which movies the users watched and rated, and which they did not. This is what we call implicit feedback where the user's watches tell us which movies they prefer to see and which they'd rather not see. In this video, we'll be focusing on implicit feedback here for the retrieval system. We'll treat each movie watched by a user as a positive example and each movie unwatched as a negative example. Another way to think about it is to interpret the movie ratings as how much the user likes the movies. This is what we call explicit feedback, where the users are telling us how much they like the movies. We'll be focusing on explicit feedback for the ranking system in our next video. 
Here we can take a look at all the movie features, movie genre, movie ID, and movie title. Next, we shuffle and split our data sets using tf.data API. The next thing we need is to populate the vocabularies for the movie titles and user IDs. This is very important because we need to map the movie titles and the user IDs into embeddings. We'll be using the vocabularies when we create the embedding layers for the model. Now we can start building the model. The retrieval model we're going to build is a simple two-tower model, which is a very common model and often serves as a starter for more sophisticated recommenders. The word tower means that the fully connected layers above the input layer follow a tower pattern, namely the width of these layers gradually decrease, which makes them look like a stacked tower. As you can see here, we have a tower on the left that maps user features to user embeddings. We call this query tower. And we have another tower on the right that maps item features to item embeddings. We call this candidate tower. The output of the model is defined as the dot product of user embedding and item embedding. This simple model actually corresponds to the matrix factorization model we discussed in our last video, if you recall. So let's define the query tower first. If you happen to have worked on natural language processing using TensorFlow 2, the Keras preprocessing layer string lookup must look very familiar to you. It maps user ID strings from the user ID vocabulary to integer indices. Here, we're using the user ID vocabulary we populated in the data preparation step. And an embedding layer follows the preprocessing layer. You can, of course, make the model more sophisticated as long as it outputs a vector at the top. Then it's good to go. This means that we can include image features and text features here as well. Anything that makes sense for your application can go here. TensorFlow Recommenders gives you total flexibility to build more advanced models. For the candidate tower, we do the same. Now we need to define our metric. In our training data, we have positive user movie pairs. To figure out how good our model is, we need to compare the affinity score that the model calculates for this pair to the scores of all the other possible candidates. If the score for the positive pair is higher than for all other candidates, our model then is highly accurate. To do this, we can use the tfrs.metrics.factorizedtopk metric, which helps evaluate how often the true candidate is in the top k candidates for a given query. This metric has one required argument, the data set of candidates that are used as implicit negatives for evaluation. We can then define our training laws based on the metric. TensorFlow Recommenders provides a retrieval task object, which is a convenience wrapper that bundles together the loss function and the metric computation. The task itself is a keras layer that takes the query and the candidate embeddings as arguments and returns the computed loss. Now we have all the pieces together and we can wire them up into a model. TensorFlow Recommenders exposes a base model class tfrs.models.model, which streamlines building models. All we need to do is set up the components in the init method and implement the compute loss method. And the base model will take care of creating the training loop to fit our model. So in the init method, we are taking the movie model, user model, and task object we defined just now. In the compute loss method, we use the task object to compute the loss. And here, we are done building the retrieval model. We can then compile the model and prepare the training and test the datasets. Then we run the familiar fit method. You can see the loss falls and the set of top K retrieval metrics are updated. These metrics tell us whether the true positive in the top K retrieved items from the entire candidate set. For example, 
a top five categorical accuracy metric of 0.2 would tell us that on average, the true positive is in the top five retrieved items 20% of the time. After training, we can evaluate the test set performance. If you are happy with the model performance, we can use the trend model to make predictions. To do that, we use tfrs.layers.factorizedtopk.bruteforce layer to build an index first. Brute force basically means we do an exhaustive search on the neighbors of an embedding vector. Now we can make a query. We pass in a user ID, 42 in this case, and our model recommends three movies for this user. Bridges of Madison County, Father of Bride, Part 2, and Rudy. Here, we're using the brute force approach to retrieve interesting movies. This works OK for our small data sets, but might be very slow for large candidate pools. To speed up embedding nearest neighbor search, we have another tool called Scan. We'll be discussing how to do efficient retrieval with Scan in a future episode. To deploy the model into a production system, you can export the trend model using save method and load it back using load model method. The exported model is in save the model format, so you could also use TF serving to run inference in your production system. So that's it, our quick walkthrough of how to use TensorFlow recommenders to build a complete retrieval system. To sum up, today we give you an introduction of TensorFlow recommenders and an end-to-end -end demo of how to build a two-tower retrieval model using TensorFlow recommenders. I hope you can appreciate how simple and elegant it is to build such a model with TensorFlow recommenders. I also want to point out that TFRS is still very young while we continue to add more features, your feedback is incredibly important when deciding our future directions. If there's anything you need for your applications, definitely let us know by filing feature requests at our GitHub repository. In our next episode, we'll be going over how to build a ranking model using TensorFlow recommenders. See you next time. <laughs>